So we're going to go ahead and get started. Welcome. Thank you for joining me again this week. We're going to be talking about the life cycles of bees. So there's different types of bees in a beehive. There is the queen bee, we have worker bees, and drone bees. And each of them have different life cycles. So we're going to talk about that today. Uh, and first, I'm going to talk about the overall life cycle of a beehive. So I'm going to talk about the entire year, uh, what it looks like. And I actually have a couple slides today to share with you. So I'm going to start with this slide right here. And uh, I'm not sure if I can write. Oh, I can annotate. Awesome. So this is my first time doing a screen share with some annotations, so hopefully this will work. So this picture, I pulled it from the internet and it gives us a good indicator of what happens in a beehive over time. And this is going to be slightly different here in Alberta because our, our climate is a little bit different. It's a pretty good indicator overall though. So at the in winter so we're getting to january february and into march it's pretty quiet in a beehive the bees are still alive they don't hibernate but the uh, the population is getting pretty low bees are reaching the end of their lifespan so we're seeing a decline in population as we get into january february now this time of year, the bees are starting to amp up. We're at below normal temperatures, uh, below seasonal right now. So the bees are getting a little bit of a slow start this year. But ideally by this time, we're seeing an increase in the population in the beehive. And that population will build and build and build as we get through the summer. So we're getting into uh, June, July, August. And our main flow, the main nectar flow or honey flow when the bees are out um, getting that deliciousness uh, to change into honey for us, uh, that's happening in July and August. And we're going to see the biggest population of bees in that main time. And uh, I've read different numbers. I've read there can be up to 85,000 bees in the beehive. That's a lot of bees. And then as we get to the end of the season, we're getting into August, September, the uh, nectar is slowing down, the flowers are finishing, and the bees are preparing for fall. So we're seeing a decrease in their population, and that decrease is going to continue on into the winter as we get into October, November, December, and then we go back to January, it starts all over again. So that is kind of an overview of what happens in the beehive for the general population numbers. And next up, I don't know how to change my slide here. We'll go back to the mouse and see if I can change it. Super. I will clear, clear my drawings. There we go. Uh, so we have, as I mentioned before, we have three different types of bees in the hive. And uh, we saw how the population changes over the season. And I'm going to tell you why the population changes um, as we get into all the different types of bees. So uh, there is a queen bee in the hive. So there's one queen bee. She's a little bit bigger than the worker bees. Uh, she's, I think, a little bit bigger than the drones too. And she's really skinny. So there's generally just one queen bee per hive, whereas for the workers, we have thousands of workers. Now they are doing most of the work in the hive. Every worker is female and they have to support the day-to-day -day operations in the hive. And the third type of bee we have in the hive is called a drone. And usually there are hundreds per hive and their population changes throughout the season. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. So if you look at the lifespan of these different types of bees, queen bees are the longest lived bees in the hive. So generally they live 
of from two to five years. And as she gets older, her production level decreases. So her job in the hive is to lay the eggs and she is responsible for the population growth in that hive. So she's gonna lay fertilized and unfertilized eggs. And the worker bees, in comparison, so we've got the queen bee living two to five years and the worker bees have a much shorter lifespan. So in the summertime, they're doing a lot of work. So they're coming in and out of the hive. We have different types of bees um, who are working with the brood. Those are called nurse bees. There are attendant bees that are taking care of the queen. We have the guard bees. So they're at the front of the hive and they're making sure nothing comes in so we don't have any wasps. They're gonna fight. Uh, those wasps off and they're going to let the rest of the hive know if there's a problem and then you have the foragers So those are the ones you're going to meet outside in the garden uh, And they are working very very hard in the summer. So their lifespan is greatly reduced to five to six weeks and uh, The bees will change their roles over their lifespan so they they will start taking care of the bees and their last job in their lifespan is usually foraging. And the bees, as we get to the end of the season, the queen is going to be laying what we call winter bees. And these bees have a longer lifespan, so they're not out foraging. They're going to be in the hive most of the time. And their role is to survive the winter. So because they're not doing a lot of work outside of the hive, um, they're eating their stores, they're making sure the queen stays warm enough, um, they're all clustered in that hive, and those bees can live for up to six months. So then we get to the final type of bee in the hive, and that is called the drone. Uh, we've talked about those, all the drones are males, and their lifespan is generally about eight weeks. And a few interesting points. I'm going to come back to the drone because there's something interesting about their eight-week lifespan there. So if we go back to the queen, uh, what she does in the hive, she is laying eggs. That's her primary role in the hive. And she uh, releases pheromones, and that keeps the cohesion in the hive. So the bees know they have uh, a queen in the hive, and they they know everything is good. So the queen is laying, she's there, um, all those pheromones get distributed, and all is good in the hive. So when the queen does go out, so when you have what's called a virgin queen, so she's a brand new queen just hatched out, she goes on a mating flight, or multiple mating flights. And that is going, those mating flights are going to give her enough ammunition in that hive to lay eggs for her entire lifespan. So once she has done her mating flight, she rarely leaves the hive. And it's really cool to see when you pull out a frame from the hive and it is covered in bees. It, the queen, you can spot her because she runs away from the light. So that's one of the, the easy ways to spot the queen when there are tons of bees in the hive. So the, the worker bees are not fertile, so those pheromones and the chemicals that the queen is releasing, it's depressing their reproductive system so the workers are infertile. And the workers, as I talked about before, they're doing the bulk of the work in the hive, they're taking care of the brood, uh, doing all the foraging, taking care of the queen, the guarding, everything. So the workers are doing all that work in the hive, and that is why we have thousands of them in the hive. So coming back to that drone and why they live eight weeks. So their only purpose for a drone is mating. In the hive, they do not produce wax. They do not uh, forage. Um, they're not bringing back nectar or pollen. Their only purpose is mating. So what the drones do, they will eat the stores and the honey, and then they will go out, fly around, and see if they can find a queen to mate with and they'll come back to the hive if they haven't found, uh, if they haven't mated, and if they have mated, then they end up dying. So what happens as we get to the end of the year, so if we go back to the previous slide, oops, my error, there we go. So if we go back to this previous slide and 
we get to that fall where they're building up for winter and we see a decrease in the population, part of that decrease is because the drones are getting kicked out of the hive. So during the winter, they're not contributing anything to the hive, and this is a survival mechanism for them. So those drones get kicked out, and uh, in the spring again, once the hive is up and running, the queen will start to lay more drones and the cycle starts over again. So at the end of the season, those drones are getting kicked out of the hive because they're not doing anything useful. There are no virgin queens in the winter. They can't get out and do their mating. So that gives you a general overview of those three different kinds of bees and how many are in there. And if we're looking at that population decline at the end of the year, the workers, we don't need as many workers to go out and collect honey because there's no more nectar out there. So the worker bees are going to slowly die off. We need a smaller population to get through the winter. So that's also why we see that decrease in population. So the last thing I'm going to talk about today is uh, looking at the very beginnings of these bees. So I've taken this picture from a book. This is it's called Beekeeping in Western Canada. It's one of the books that are used as we're learning about how to keep bees. So for beginner beekeepers, this is a great resource. And on this page here, uh, it shows I'll find my pen again. So it shows the, whoops, let me go back. Not that far back. There we go. So I'm going to draw, there, now I have my pencil. So it shows the three different cycles. So this is when the queen is laying an egg. It shows what the process is for the development cycle from an egg all the way to a fully mature adult for the three different types of bees. So I've been talking about the queen first. So I let's look at the queen here. So if you see over here, it says the queen is 16. So 16 is the number of days it takes for a queen to go from egg to fully mature. And if we compare that to a worker bee up at the top, Worker bees take 21 days to develop, and drones down at the bottom take 24 days to develop. And if we look at each of these cycles, we start off in an egg phase. So that's when the queen is laying those eggs. And then the, I think these lines right here are when they change the stage. So uh, the bees throughout this cycle, they, were, they will molt six times for each type of bee. So we get into the larval stage and you can see the development of the bees. So if you look very carefully here, the worker bees and the drones the eggs are laid in, in the bottom of the honeycomb and then as they develop, they kind of develop um, coming out. But the queen, she develops kind of going down. So there are special cells in the hive called queen cells and they look different than a worker cell or a drone cell. So when I'm looking at a, at a frame in the beehive, I can see which cells are going to be workers, which ones are drones, and which ones are queens. And the queens come, they actually come out of the cell a little bit. And uh, I should see if I can find a, a picture and I can share it with you to show what that queen cell looks like. It's, um, you can definitely tell a difference. You know when it's queen. So in these pictures, you can see the cell of the queen starts at the top and then she develops coming down, whereas the others are starting in the bottom and they, they come out. So we go through the larval stage and um, this, uh, you might remember this from in school, the insect development cycle. So we go from an egg to a larva to a pupa to an adult. So the, the bee in the larval stage, it does go through spinning 
And then we have the pre-pupil stage, the pupil stage, and the adult stage. So once the bees have reached an adult stage, they're in these cells and they have to eat their way out. So there's cappings over the cell and they have to chew their way through the cappings and get out of that cell. And then we have a new adult worker bee. So that's kind of interesting. So we have the different stages. We have the egg stage, larval stage, pupil stage. We have pre-pupil and pupil stage, and then the adult stage. And the queens, they uh, go through their life cycle from egg to adult in only 16 days. So it's very quick. Workers, 21 days, and drones are 24 days. So different types, uh, and this is also because there's different urgency for different types of bees. If there's a queen, if the hive needs a queen bee, they need her much quicker than a worker or a drone, so she needs to develop faster. After she has come out, she still needs to go on her mating flights and uh, get ready to lay those eggs, so that can take another few days. And the bees need to have her producing. If they lose her during the season, um, it will interrupt the, the hatching of new workers and new drones. So they need to get her up and running as quickly as they can. So I'm gonna clear all of that up. Those are all the sessions, um, all of the slides I have for you today. So I'm gonna open it up to Q&A. So if you have any questions, please feel free to post them in the chat and I will do my best to get you a great answer. So thank you so much for coming too. I really appreciate having people here to share my knowledge with. And if you have any questions about um, any of the slides, I can go back to those or um, anything else. And I'm also going to see if I can find a picture of those queen cells. I know I took a really great one last year. It will just be a matter if I can find it or not. So feel free to post those questions in the chat. Okay, how can you see a physical difference between a drone and a worker? Okay, um, I found one picture. Oh, here's a start of a queen cell. Okay, here we go. I'm hoping I can find a picture here. I'm going to share my screen again. Uh, so on this uh, picture here, this cell right here that I'm outlining in blue, that is a queen cell. It's not quite finished. It's still open at the bottom. This one down at the bottom on the right, that is a fully closed in queen cell. So there's a new queen bee in there. And then these smaller cells here, those are capped broods. So those ones are getting into that later stage, they're almost ready to come out, they're almost adults. And if you look very, very carefully, it can be a little bit of a challenge to see. In some of these cells, I'm going to clear, clear it out, but there you can see some, I'm going to zoom in as well. I'll maybe zoom in close that there we go okay so I'm zooming in on the picture and you can see I know I saw one somewhere in here in the cells okay where was that one I saw there are some I did see some brood where did I see them some early stages maybe I'm making up stories I might be seeing things, but anyway, uh, some of these smaller, the open cells, sometimes you can see eggs or larvae in there. 
we'll see how how what other pictures I can find because I do have some really awesome pictures. I don't know why it's not letting me look at my folder. So how long have you been a beekeeper for? I can answer that one right now while I'm looking for the pictures. So um, I have been keeping bees for uh, at YYC Beeswax for about four years and then I uh, kept bees for um, I was working for another company, so I got to do it as a summer job for, I think it was two or three summers. And I'm hoping to find a picture that has some drones in it so I can show you the difference um, between them as well. So, what other pictures do we have here? Where do bees live? Where do bees live? So bees live in a hive. And I can show you a picture of that. I know I have lots of pictures of those. Um, and uh, my boxes are either a wood color or white. And I will show you a picture of those as well. So here I have some good pictures. This one is a queen cell. Okay, so this picture, I'm going to share my screen again. And I'll show you in this photo. So we have another queen cell in this photo. Uh, it's down at the bottom. And uh, there is also a drone on this frame. So I'm going to zoom in. And we'll go up here. It's a little bit blurry. But this bee here with the big eyes, and he's a little bit fatter and a little bit longer. So this is a drone bee. And right beside him is one of the worker bees. So you can see uh, the drone is right here, and that worker bee is here. So when you're in the hive, you can see the difference between the worker bee and the drone. And you can also see the difference between uh, the worker bees, the drones, and the queen. They are all quite different. So let me find a picture of the hives. Um, I have the winter pictures. When I'm getting the beehive ready for winter, and I know I take a, I've taken pictures in the spring as well. Um, I haven't unwrapped the hives yet. So the, uh, this picture So this is a picture of the beehive. So these ones are all wrapped up and ready for winter. This is a picture I took last fall when I was getting ready for winter. And these two hives are actually the only two that survived the winter. So um, they are really busy right now ramping up. There's a lot of bees in these hives. They came through winter very, very well. So if you have any other questions, I'm going to see if I can find a picture of the queen bee as well. But she's, it's always fun to see the queen, and we'll see if there's any drones in that picture when I find a picture of her. And we can see all three of the bees, three different kinds of bees. So is there several queens in one hive? Most of the time there are not. Um, on occasion, there will sometimes be more than one queen per hive. It's very rare. Um, and usually when this happens, the hive is getting ready to swarm. So one queen will leave with about two-thirds of the hive, and the other queen will stay behind and continue um, building, rebuilding that hive once they're gone. Um, usually when there are new when a new queen hatches, the bees usually, if you remember from that picture, there were multiple queen cells. So if she, 
if multiple queens hatch at the same time, they'll actually fight. And whoever wins the fight becomes the queen for that hive. So normally we only see one queen per hive. Do we have any other questions while well, I'm searching, searching for pictures? I know I have tons of pictures around. They Sometimes they're just all over the place. Okay, so here I have some good pictures. Um, I might just go through these pictures. one at a time, then I can show you a few different things. So how often is the queen laying eggs? So I think she can lay, what was the number I was reading, uh, thousands of eggs per day. So she's pretty quick. And she, she will start laying, so when there starts to be pollen available in the spring, um, I'm supplementing my bees with pollen right now, so I'm hoping the queens are starting to lay eggs. Um, protein, uh, pollen has, is their major source of protein, and that helps with the uh, development of the brood. Um, so they, she won't lay if there's not enough pollen. So I give them the supplement so she starts laying, and then hopefully when the weather straightens out, it will all come together. And um, once there's pollen available in nature, then I'll stop uh, feeding them pollen, and they can collect it themselves. So I have a whole bunch of pictures here, um, and it doesn't want to let me go to the next picture. Let's see if I can open it with another program. So I'm going to share my screen again, and I will show you some of these pictures. So, um, which picture do I want? So here, um, I, there's a bee that's just emerging. So right here, the bee is starting to chew her way out. So that's kind of fun. And what other pictures can I show you? So here is a picture this is of the beehive, so this one I actually took a split. So I took some of the bees out of this beehive to create a new hive. Um, so you can see there's what that beehive looks like. Um, and then the smaller box on the side, that's going to become a new hive. And I, I'm pretty sure I have a picture with a queen in here somewhere. I thought I did. Um, we have some more queen cells, but I don't see any pictures that have queens in them. I think these ones, yeah, that was the bee that's hatching. Oh, here's a video of that bee hatching as well. You can see her starting to chew her way out. And I think if we go close to the end, we catch her coming out. Oh, maybe she doesn't come out in this video. I do have a video that I catch the bee coming out. So that that's a pretty neat one too. And um, what else? I was sure I had a picture of a queen. Well, I'll have to share that in another session, show you what the queen is. So do we have any other questions today? So I don't see any more questions coming in, so I would like to thank everybody for joining me today. I hope you learned something about bees and their cycles. And uh, I will be back again next week for another session. Uh, I'm going to be doing these, um, I'm trying them out weekly. 
on Wednesdays at noon, so you can uh, join me again for that. And if you have any suggestions for topics, what you're curious about, about uh, bees and beekeeping, uh, candle making, uh, let me know. Uh, feel free to reach out to me. You can uh, connect with me on social media, um, Facebook at YYC Beeswax, uh, Instagram and Twitter at YYC Wax, or you can send an email to info at yycwax.com. I'll put that in the chat for you. Um, and yeah, let me know what topics you're curious to learn more about, and I'll add those into the Lunch and Learn series. So thank you so much for being here. Um, it was a pleasure to share my knowledge with you, and I hope to see you back again next week. So thank you so much, and we'll see you next time.